it's still niche down, you know, for example, the story brand framework. Not every business is the same. Not every uh, every person's journey is the same. Not everybody's issues are the same. But you can apply the same framework or the same, you know, SaaS system or whatever to, to basically help them solve very similar problems. And what they do with it is what they do with it. Uh, but at the same time, like if you're helping them by putting together a course that says, okay, this is the way to break down your landing pages. This is the way to actually use your messaging. This is how your messaging translates into your video. You know, it. there's some of it is like, you know, every pair of Jordans is made basically the same. Right. But if you lace them up versus I lace them up, a different thing happens, right? Yeah. Right. It just is what it is. That's the fine line I'm trying to play right now. Off that line of thinking, it's kind of like, okay, um, if there's something, it's like the whole flywheel concept as well. You know, it's like, I know there's certain niches that are going to work really well. So like the way I'm kind of architect thinking about this in terms of visually like architecting this, right? It's like, okay, have a website, a la story brand that tells a story of what I do. And then they can choose their journey, if you will, in terms of what, um, what they may need help with. But then at least there's one place to cohesively that says, these are the things I can help with. I don't want to be a jack of all trades, but these are the core competencies I can help you in, right? How do you select your journey? Because more specifically, if there, I mean, it's more of a matter of time, I, I feel, right? Once like say a niche kind of doubles down and we're getting a lot of results, all we have, all we have to do as, a, as a, uh, a marketer is then just get more niche specific with the landing page that we could throw up using the same type of framework, right? And then basically start to showcase these certain parts of the system to get more of those people because then there's going to be scalability. But until we land on that point, and I'm talking, I say we as in myself, right? Until I land on that specific, those specific industry types, I can still very like generally talk about this in that sense to say for a restaurant, this is what we'd be doing. This, these are the things that you're going to need for a whatever type of business. These are things that you're going to need. Because then if we can build into the flywheel, then that business, the next person that comes along is going to benefit even more from what's already been built, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dude, and I guess with that, man, like uh, that was our cold open. Let's get into it right now. That's episode number eight, because I feel like it takes us to exactly where we want to go. Leave this right in the pod because you know what that was that was pretty useful for me too. Um, but on episode number eight, what we want to do is really get into the story brand framework. Uh, this is something that you put me onto a while ago. I've seen it in a bunch of different landing pages, uh, but I know you're even kind of more into it than I am. Um, kind of a little bit farther down the path, anyways, right? I've just heard it more, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. It's it's literally as old as time, right? Like, this is what it is. People actually, um, you know, we always talk about no like trust, no like trust, no like trust. And one of the things that gets people into that no like trust is like actually caring what you have to say. Um, but to take it a step further is like, they don't necessarily want to know what I have to say. They yeah. want to know how I can help them and if I've been able to do it before, and I've, if my experience is going to kind of resonate with them on their own personal journey, you know, on their own hero's journey. Um, so kind of what I'd like to start off with is like, with your understanding of it, um, basically, uh, yeah, so essentially, like, why are stories so powerful in, in marketing? I mean, I think it's interesting, right? And I'm going to butcher this because I'm not like a, um, it's just the way I retain information. I don't, I, I usually don't retain the origin of it. I usually figure out what the purpose is and then I latch onto that. But mm -hmm. really what it comes back down to for me is like understanding, right? And this is in my own words, understanding that throughout the history of man, right? The way that tradition and things have been passed on is through story. We understand this from a very young age um, when we're growing up because that's how we were uh, taught things as well, right? Whether it was nursery rhymes or bedtime stories or things of that nature, um, before the masses were literate and we were able to even document these things, how were traditions told and passed down? It was through story. It was through fable. And oftentimes it was through a way in which it was kind of like a rhyme or a poem or, or something very short, right? So- mm -hmm. This is something that's been classic, but then also the other thing too is like even say um, high school English, right? Being introduced to Joseph Campbell and the different like say uh, writing styles and storytelling styles. One of the things that stood out to me was once you understand say the hero's journey and how that story is basically set up 
and the components of it, you can never unsee it to the point of where almost every story that utilizes that same type of framework, uh, you could kind of see where the spoilers are going to come, right? If all, every movie is the same movie. Every story is the same story. Right, right, right. And uh, I think maybe because I understood that there was a cheat code there, maybe my brain was like, don't remember that cheat code word for word or frame for frame, frame by frame, mainly because you're going to spoil it for yourself. But, you know, as it kind of consistently comes up, we know that it's a truth. It's a foundational principle. And, you know, when I recently, when I first discovered Donald Miller and the story brand, that's really where it came from. All right. It wasn't something that he basically made up, but then he utilized the same framework in, uh, how to tell that story in a a company's brand, if you will. Hence, maybe that's where the origin of the story brand came from in terms of the name of his business. I'm not sure, right? But I was exposed to it years ago. And then looking at it, I feel as though, wow, if we're using something that's been tried and true throughout the history of mankind, right? And we're mapping it to marketing, right? Then you would think that because it is a foundational principle, it, it, it may work. And, you know, needless to say, it absolutely is working, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, And I think one of the interesting parts of it is that when you think about a company using the story brand and how a story works, the the real essential part of it for me is that the, you know, they say everybody is the hero in their own story. Everybody's a main character in their own story. But when you're using it for marketing, your company isn't the hero, right? The character, the main character, the Luke Skywalker, is the person that's reading your content, right? So you have to kind of uh, identify who they are by kind of, you know, basically, you know, it's going to be them. You call out their problems, the things that really actually apply to them. And then you show up as your Obi-Wan Kenobi, essentially, you know, and what you're saying, if you think about not to scar, Star, Wars, scar, Star Wars geek out here, but like Obi-Wan shows up and he's like a seasoned veteran. I've been here before. I know how to do this. I have the tools that will help you get this transformation that you're looking for. And good marketing is about transformation, right? Right. Marketing is about, it's literally solving a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't buying the products that we sell. And and I feel like when I'm doing it myself, and I've been super, super uh, guilty of this over the years, I'm just presenting the product, you know, buy this because it does this. But like if people are going to have like a real affinity to your brand, it's because you solve a problem for them consistently. You know, like if you have a headache, what do you do? But I have a headache. What should I do? Yeah, you should take some medicine. What kind of medicine? Uh, Tylenol, Advil, ibuprofen. Right. Because they branded it in that they're the solution to that problem. Exactly. Right. Right? You know, if my stomach hurts, Pepto-Bismol. If... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know if if I have a ward on my foot, Dr. Scholes, you know, like there's just there's good things. And it's not necessarily that I remember the product in reality. What it is, is, I remember the solution to the problem. Right. And I think that's that's kind of a really cool part of the story brand. You know, after the guide shows up, then they you know, they get together. They make up a plan, you know, like they do the training to become the Jedi. Um you know, I guess with the story brand, they do get into like calls to action and stuff like that. We don't have that in Star Wars. There isn't any like, hey, come join the rebellion. You know, that was before they had interactive 3D movies or whatever. Yeah. But it it just, it is what it is. And then there's the option of success and failure. Right. And, And both of those kind of go towards it. So I've really been focusing on it this week as I'm trying to think about the journey that, that the actual customers are on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a lot of times with with subpar marketing or just like say traditional marketing, it can get really, really wordy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like the problem can be like just you're not defining it easy enough. You're using really complicated language. Whereas just identifying the problem, calling out who has this problem, and then offering the guidance and the expertise, I think it is is actually like life-changing. I as a guy who owns an agency. Yeah. Life changing, life changing, life changing. If it's something that's used in so many different industries successfully over the years, right? Like, you know, a la Hollywood, right? Specifically copywriting in terms of how uh, words can be used in a series of words can be used to persuade you to do something. When I first got exposed to copywriting, I did. I thought it was just that little C in a circle. Mm-hmm. Granted, this was over, you know, like probably over two decades ago. Man, I'm dating myself. 
over mm-hmm. two decades ago, right? But in being able to understand how you can go from like, you know, in the digital age, a blank screen to pixels onto a screen, you reading something or you reading and watching and listening to something. And then ba- basically from that messaging, you're taking out your credit card and then you're, it's taking your money. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing to understand that there's a framework and there's a process to it. And once we understand that and we understand, you know, how the world actually operates at a sixth grade reading, writing and speaking level, it should challenge the way that we are, we we look at communicating with our customers and, and clients, right? Do you think there's any brands, like one, absolutely. I think that's a great point of like simplified language all the time. It's easy as a marketer, as an author, as something like that, it's super easy to explain a difficult concept using difficult words. Right. But what you're doing is you're alienating most of your audience and, and there's no way to demonstrate your understanding of something or your ability to solve a problem as like explaining it at a sixth grade level, right? It's like, everybody should be able to explain this. If I say it to my kids, they should say, oh yeah, what does daddy do? Makes websites, make videos. That's Why? right. So people buy stuff, you know, like it is what it is, right? <laughs> um, now, I know... It's easy to say almost any industry would kind of benefit from using the story brand benefit, sorry, story brand framework, but is there any industries that you can think of that are just like a natural kind of, you know, hand in glove kind of fit where it's, it's just really easy. I think back to your point, it could be any, but more specifically, if you think about who your actual ideal customer is, if your ideal customer is someone that is of the masses and you're not dealing in a climate to where you're dealing from you know, in the same sphere of like highly educated, highly um, specific, you know, um, uh, professional field to where you can speak at a very elevated vocabulary level, um, you're more than likely going to fit into the bucket that uh, can benefit from utilizing the the story brand framework, right? And and let me kind of preface this too, like as we're kind of like championing the the framework, this wasn't developed by that company, right? This was something that that company basically had put together and showcased to say, hey, these these building blocks that have worked over time and in different industries are working here. Now you can utilize this in your marketing and it applies to these types of businesses, meaning every type of business where you're actually dealing with a consumer that probably isn't as educated um, and experienced about the product or the service that you sell as, as, as they are. Right. So Mm -hmm. in in that context, I would say if you're not dealing with the same type of person, right. That's Uh that's specific in the field, more than likely uh, their framework's going to work for you and your business. Yeah, that's a great point. I actually sent, uh, sorry, I actually had a client, um, what they always, what they make is lasers that go inside of volcanoes and inside of spaceships, right? And when they gave me their product write-ups and all this kind of stuff, I was like, well, we can't use this. Nobody can understand that. And they're like, no, for us, when people call me, they're saying, you know, how many gigahertz in the flex capacitor if I want, you know, what happens if I go past 88? You know, where it's just things that to me, a guy who does not have NASA level intelligence, it just does not make sense to me, right? Right. Where for them, because everybody literally speaks their language, their their language of science, it's just they, you know, they don't need the story brand of who's going to need the vacuum inside the volcano. You know, Every, it's like you need this because you're looking, you know, you're a PhD student that needs this for your project. You don't have that question. Um but if you're in another space, uh, especially like kind of personal branding spaces, I think they're really good. If you, you know, obviously anything that's that's service based with with one person, I feel like it's almost really, really easy to use. You know, if you are a real estate agent, if you are, you know, a coach, if you're kind of anything like that, it's very easy to present it uh, on a personal level. So it's really, really appealing. You know, it's like, and to me, to go back to Star Wars, it's why Obi-Wan Kenobi is an appealing guide on the journey as opposed to the Jedi Order. You know, mm-hmm. it becomes less personable. But then, you know, in time, once you get in, oh, it turns out you do get trained by everybody else that's along. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of a brief overview of kind of like who would use it and uh, certain cases. Um but can we dive into what the actual story brand framework is a little more and just kind of go into the sections and 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 see if we can uh, dig for some gold in there? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll I'll take a crack at explaining what it is, right? The story brand framework is um, a seven part framework that takes um, a brand, a company's brand script, mm -hmm. right? Mapped out, um, and it's an exercise that you would do first in the mm -hmm. sense of like identifying who is the hero in the, the the journey of your, in terms of like identifying um, what does your ideal client or customer, which is the hero of their journey, right? What do they want, right? So identify who the character is, right? Who is the hero? If you are the guide, what problems does your customer, the hero in the story, right, um, have, right? And oftentimes when you think about problems, you, you want to identify, right? the external problems that are that that are apparent right the the symptoms not the cause right and also the internal ones if that problem right doesn't get um solved what are they experiencing pain frustration anxiety worry what are those things right and then also uh, philosophically right is it a way of thinking is it a mindset thing right what are they going through um and then when you appear as the guide so i'm kind of just going through the the seven step process right okay. so yeah, yeah, I I really like that, but maybe just to add even an extra level of context, let's let's kind of build something out with an example. Yeah, um, so let me go through the seven parts first, and then let's go through an example. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So within your uh, brand script, or if you go to uh, mystorybrand.com, it's free, right? Mm -hmm. So I, it's almost sounds like an, it's an infomercial for the company, but man, the that foundational framework can be used regardless if you're a marketing agency or a consultant like Kevin and myself or not, right? Just for your own company itself. So check that out, right? So here are the seven parts I'll read them to you, right? So the very first part of that is going to be a character, which is going to be your customer, okay? Which is the hero in the journey. Uh, part two is has a problem. What are their problems, right? And there's subsections to that as well. Um, it meets a guide, which is you or your company, okay? Um, who gives them a plan? What is your solution to their problem or solutions to their problem, right? Uh, and and how do, you, how do you go about solving their problems? So in other words, how do they go about reaching out to you to help guide them to solve their problem, right? Uh, the call to action is what do they need to do first? What is that first thing they need to do? Call, visit, schedule, book book an appointment, you know, take this quiz, whatever that is, right? Um, that ends in success. So the before after state, right? After you solve the problem, what? how do they feel? What does that look like? What is the benefit, not the feature, but the benefit of, um, of, of you working with you? Um, and then uh, that helps them to avoid failure, right? So what are the things that, that, that could happen if they don't work with you? If they continue with doing what they're doing right now, if they keep suffering through the problem, what are those things? And then the last part is um, the character transformation from, which is the before state, to the after state. So if you look at these seven components, right, and you basically fill these parts of the components out, this comprises of what the store brand calls your brand script. So within this brand script are copy chunks that you can utilize now to then craft different assets for your company, right? Your website wireframe that you can that you can hand off to your, de uh, your designer to be able to kind of make look pretty your email templates, your lead magnet, those things, okay? What do you mean by copy chunks that you can use in different places? Yeah, so if if you guys recall the uh, website um, uh, podcast episode that we went through, right? Kevin is the professional and the pro at creating uh, and developing websites, right? So what I mean by copy chunks is if you think about, say, a story and you utilize this concept of having a brand script for your story, each part or each section is a different uh, piece of, um, or cluster of content that focuses on one certain aspect of your company. Okay. So if you think about that, look, look at, visualize that as different, say building blocks or Legos for anything that you're doing with your messaging. Okay. So you can move them around if you needed to have say different messaging for different, say assets that you wanted. Okay. Um, and that's how I kind of would look at it in terms of copy chunks. You're not always starting from scratch. So if you ever need to pull, I just let me finish with this part, right? It's like if you ever needed to kind of um, look at, say, if my like, what are the different things that like pains that my um, ideal customer are experiencing now? That's where you start from. Go into that part. Has a problem? What are the problems, right? And then kind of go deeper into that part. And then, like in more traditional website language, that's basically the features and benefits, right? Like because yeah. you're providing the solutions right now, or that's the problem, I guess, essentially calling the person out that's who the character would be uh your our story or about us is basically how you introduce yourself as the guide the guide exactly right so it's still the same in essence it's still the same framework that we've been using but it's a different spin on it because like you know if you think about really compelling speakers 
what's great about them is when you talk to them, they make you feel like you're the most important person there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've heard that from uh, like a bunch of people and they say, talk about Obama or uh, Brad Pitt, you know, like the, the story is always the same where it's like, he's talking to me, like he's excited to talk to me. Meanwhile, this was like the most powerful man in the world, you know, but he's just really good on a personal level, makes them feel like a star. And then whatever the, you know, then he turns around and asks them for, you know, whatever, $50,000 of campaign. or Yeah. Whatever. What's that saying? Like in order to be interesting, be interested. Oh, that's a good saying. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's just, you have to be, yeah, you actually have to care about the other person. It's that same thing. If you're always asking, if you're always making an offer, people don't care. If, I, if every time we got on this call, I was sitting here, oh, Tom, we're, you know, if, if you were constantly telling me how awesome you are, that would get old very quickly. You, you know what I mean? Because like, I'm not that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, but people don't like talking to somebody who's like super conceited. And a lot of time yeah. websites or sales copies or, or just marketing materials in general, it's like, we do this, we have this, we've done this. Right. Right. Yeah. And after a while, you what you really should be saying, what the story brand framework really lets you do is say, we can help you with this. Right. So if you think about it in the way that you've educated me on how you have your website pages flow is by the end of the uh, someone scrolling down or reading or skimming, right? In this, in this day and age, a page, you want those people to be bought in multiple times that you understand their problem and that you can help solve their problem. Right. Mm -hmm. That is that's the conversation that you're having. And that's a great point that you that you make too, right? Is like in order to be interesting, be interested. So if you're interested in their problems, what are you doing? You're asking them questions. Mm -hmm. You're acknowledging I've been there, I understand. And right, when I've had those problems, this is how we solved it, right? And that actually really relates back to like say onboarding calls, sales calls, and all that stuff. Like you know, in essence, for you to do a really good job on your sales calls, they say like you should be talking, you know, no more than 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So your website is just an extension of that. Your marketing is just an extension of that where, you know, it should still be about that person where as they're reading it in their head, you know, it's that you're connecting with where I already am, you know, like you're connecting yeah. with my thoughts and I'm actually the star of your website. Right. And, and that's it's a great way to put it, right? In addition to being the guide in all the story brand, right? Being the guide in someone else's journey, your customer's journey. Think about what their favorite radio station is. Mm -hmm. W-I-I-F-M, right? What's in it for me? <laughs> so if you're thinking about from that standpoint, in order for me, like, in, so if you think about everything we're talking about, it's interesting because it all stems from the same foundation. And if that foundation that we're talking about is utilizing this framework, right? Is to basically be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm here to help you. If you're the star of the show, you're the star of your journey, then think about that, right? If I'm talking, I should be asking a question and listening more, right? A la sales, right? And everything else should be geared around how do I help you solve your problem? Are you experiencing any of this, this pain so I can help you with that, right? I was speaking to a client that, that we just launched his website the other day. Like it, it launched on Saturday, but right before this, I was talking to him and he said, man, when I got off my first phone call with you, I was so happy because you were so confident. You knew what you were talking about. You broke it down in just plain English. And I was convinced that you would help me do it. Mm. Didn't say I was so, I was so impressed by how cool you are. You know, I was so impressed at like all of the stuff you said. No, he said, after talking to you, I knew that you could help me get there, mm. which is kind of interesting. Cause like, obviously my my mind traditionally every time i've read this i'm i'm really only thinking about how the story brand works in written form but it's also 100% in in your conversations uh in your interview styles in well, in this podcast style really right like where what people should be getting out of it is like will this help me get to the next level and kind of with that in mind um I've found a couple of really good podcasts on it. It's like, you know, there's podcasts that are literally called the story brand framework. I've, I've been plowing through those. Do That's you awesome. have any other resources that are, are really good for people? Yeah. You know, honestly, I would say take it to Google. You're going to find and gravitate to different story brand guides that are out there and different companies that utilize a framework to do things. And for me, it's the repetition that um, allows me to like, like with any skill set, right? It's the reps that you put in that, mm -hmm. that'll get you more honed in on it. 
I've had the privilege of working with a, a close friend uh, and business owner that was a certified uh, story brand guide. So um, in a previous company, um, we worked with him to craft our uh, website messaging, mm -hmm. right? So it was interesting because I went through and I invested in the course years ago, understood it conceptually, but then I was, I was putting it into practice. The challenge is I'm too close to the problem. I'm trying to write this for myself and my own company. And it's just like, I need an external person to help with this. So, and it just so happened that one of our friends that we used to mastermind with became a, a story brand guide. So we were like, hey, let me hop on a call with you and just have you guide us. You be the guide in our hero's journey because we can't articulate for whatever reason, right? Yeah, I was laughing because at the end of that podcast, like 20 minutes ago, I'm coming around a corner on my bike laughing because I'm like, at the end of every episode, they pitch if you want to be a story brand, a certified story brand framework person, right? Take our uh -huh. course. Uh -huh. And I'm like, these guys must suck at it because Tom's super into it and he's never bought the course. But he did buy the course. I bought the I bought the info product course, yeah. not the guide, not the certification. I never went through the yeah. certification of it, right? And it was just, you know, that's it kind of gets back to that same thing of just like it's time and place. Yeah, it's reps too. I mean, I understand it. I see the value in it. And I also know that um being able to experience on, on both sides in the sense of taking the course, right? Listening to it in so many different ways, but also seeing it in practice, seeing it out in the field, and then also being like say a client of a certified guide, it helped because of the way you pull things. And what makes it even better now and make it gives me more confidence is the fact that we can use AI hmm. because now I can leverage what I understand and what I think I know, but then I can leverage, say, a different type of, uh, you know, intelligence database that can give me other ways of, say, articulating the, the framework, which drives it home even better, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, as we said many times, it's artificially intelligent, but it's an amazing tool. Um, what I've been, I've been using it literally yesterday i guess when i was writing out a, a website where did it in the story brand framework mm -hmm. somewhat uh just because i feel like that's a really good way to personalize it yeah uh but that combined with like you know in the tone of you know somebody that you like it just it gives you a really really good first draft that you can then you know you still always have to edit it because you don't want to mm -hmm. just use other stuff right but it, it really does help you connect with like the actual pain points, what somebody's actually thinking. And that's really what it is. That's going to help somebody, you know, that's going to make somebody trust you enough to purchase. Yeah. Right? Agreed. This is how I can solve your problem. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Um, yeah. I, I'm honestly, I think I'm going to be studying this all weekend because of just how interesting it is to me. And I know that's a little bit, maybe just like talk and shop kind of stuff. But, you know, every once in a while you get onto something that just is like, it makes you obsess over it. You know what I mean? I was actually surprised uh, that you weren't as familiar with the framework just because of how good you are um, at uh, creating websites. Because I understand that by doing them for so long and not being like, say, a pro at it, that there's so many nuances to it. Before I was exposed to that and even having a framework for it, I was trying to fit copy chunks inside of a a website UI that was already laid out for me. And I was like, that wasn't working because if you have a different one that a customer is saying, oh, I like the way this one looks better. I didn't know how to map out there at the time. I didn't have a brand script. I didn't, have, but see, right, it's like I didn't have a brand script to then be able to map to a website layout that someone liked, right? Mm -hmm. And that was before I understood that copy is what drives design in most cases. And that's why I'm excited to even to see how you're going to be able to level up your design process by incorporating this into your already working uh, uh, website uh, build type of uh, um, service, you know? Yeah, to be honest with you, like over the years, we've done a lot of service-based stuff, right? So with service-based stuff, uh, especially when it's like SEO oriented, what you're saying is like, hey, are you looking for a window repair in Richmond Hill? And then you kind of, you take that like, if somebody has a broken window, you don't need the story brain framework because it's just like, it's like a product solution generally right it's it applies more when somebody has a lot of different options and they need a re and they're looking to make a connection essentially right like this is one of those things that creates brand ambassadors i believe you know like yeah as opposed to you know you want me to generate leads for your local business this is the easiest way to do it quickly and effectively but even still to go back and do some of those i would you know i would definitely change some of the write-ups 
because it, it's definitely we do this we're good at that we do whatever they work essentially those websites are designed to generate leads and they do generate leads but do they generate people who are trumpeting the brand and will for years to come that it really comes down to the experience they had with the service right yeah. And I think circling back to that as well, right? The intention of, say, a landing page, as we've talked about in a previous episode, right? That copy, that design, that function of that ac asset, if you will, is to have them take an action, right? There's only two things you can do. You can either click off the site and not do anything, or you're going to take the action there because the pain that you have is aligned with the, 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 the solution that we have to alleviate you of that pain, right? But as you're talking about it, every business in 2023 should, right, have a website. Now, are you properly and efficiently utilizing that as an asset for your company is what we're talking about. So if you already have something in place, right? But then now if you're layering on top the story brand framework, this should enhance that user experience already. And it should promote more brand, like more of a brand ambassador type of a, a play with the copy that you have, right? Well, the two different styles too, they also address different things, right? It's, right. it's you know, it's like a traffic and conversion. Right. Like if the biggest problem that your electrical company has is like not enough people find our website, you know, I'd go heavy with SEO where we're talking about the specific things that somebody does. You don't have to lay it out. You know, you you can make them like you a little bit more by talking about, say, the pain points and like really, you know, digging deep when you're talking about like, you know, maybe if you're telling the story of how they try to do their own pot lights and you know, like you don't have to worry if your shoddy DIY electrical is going to catch fire when when family's over for Christmas or, you know, you can you could play it out that way. But at the same time, they have the problem of traffic. And if you want to solve traffic first and foremost, you know, that's a SEO with an offer. But if the issue is like, hey, we get a ton of people like, you know, I, I'm dwelling on this one website 100 percent that gets thousands of website views every month. But the conversion rate is like maybe 5%. Like, could the story brand take that to 10, 12 by making the actual end user more of the, the story? I absolutely believe so. You know, I'm I'm in my head already mapping it out where, you know, we're going to split test the two versions against each other, uh, which actually conveniently takes me to the next point. You know, like if somebody wants to implement the story brand framework in their business, um, what is the first step that they should take? Understand it, right? First, understand it. Like we were saying, there's so many different resources. And if you are a visual and auditory person, I suggest going to YouTube, right? If you're uh, more of a, a reader type, then just go onto that website, right? Understand it first and then go through it and build out your own brand script, right? So there's, again, there's so much out there that you could Google. I've learned so much by Googling because once you understand the building blocks of it, then you're going to want to do it yourself, right? So take... And again, there's three different buckets, right? The the DIYers, the, the do-it-yourself people, the done uh, with you people, and the done for you people, right? So within that, there's a whole there's a whole business around um, story the brand certified guides helping you to do this, right? And there's also free resources as well. Whatever to whatever bucket you choose or journey you choose to go on to, understand it first, and then go ahead and then the very first step is to fill out your brand script. Understand mm -hmm. it, fill out your brand script because that's the crux of everything else. And all the other assets that uh, can be created from there. And for me, what I did was um, I leveraged Chat GPT and I said, act as a story brand certified guide. And what can you, what can you, uh, what kind of assets can you create for me? And I'll say, great, as a story brand certified guide, these are the assets I can create for you. Awesome. Um, what do you need from me in order to create those assets? And I'll say, great, uh, these are the questions I need you to answer. So I went ahead and did that. That's great. That's great. I am definitely stealing that. <laughs> Within the next 24 hours, I'm absolutely stealing that. Yeah. You mentioned something too about like the visuals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with story brand, a lot of times I'm thinking, you know, like you're painting this picture of whatever. How does the type of visuals or, or even video that you would use on a site or landing page, how would that change? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, if you think about it, one from just the wireframe perspective, and a wireframe is just a layout of a website, right? Mm -hmm. What if you looked at any, and there's free resources again, please just use Google to your advantage, right? Use it as a resource. Uh, story brand wireframe, right? There's a whole bunch of companies that showcase that, 
So mm-hmm. in, in the different ways that you can say aesthetically design it, the actual say copy chunks from your brand script are going to be laid out very in very similar fashion. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, here in this section, you're going to put this part of your brand script. In this section, you're going to put this part. In this section, you're going to put this part. And then once you understand kind of how that roadmap looks, it's almost like you're going on a treasure hunt because then you can look at, say, all the different story brand websites that are out there in the wild. And I almost am positive that you are going to land on um, a website that is in your field. Look at how it's laid out and you're going to see these nuances. You're going to be like, oh, my goodness, it's going to be literally be that reticular activating system that's going to go off in, in your brain. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like. That red Ferrari that you've always wanted, you're never you're never going to be able to unsee it now once you understand that process, mm-hmm. right? Visually speaking, graphically speaking, you're going to always want to uh, speak to the emotion in it. So in the header, you're going you're going to want to showcase that imagery should be the after state that your ideal customer wants. So if you think about it from that standpoint too, the header of a website is before is everything above the fold. The fold is before you start scrolling, okay? Whether that's on a desktop or on mobile. So if you think about it from that standpoint, that real estate that's there within a three second, say, test, if you're looking at your website or you're looking at anyone else's website, you're going to want to within three seconds know what they do and how they do it right in that snapshot. So what's going to be conveyed there is going to be that image of the after state. What does your ideal customer want and how can how can they get started working with you? Those three things, right? I am 1000% going to turn around and say that exact same thing to my team. The hero image is the transformation. Yeah. It's, it's after the transformation. It's the outcome. That's what it is. And then the wording just matches it. Well put. Well put, man. I, like, Well, bro, with so your S. Confident. And here's the other thing too, right? It's like, it's nothing that like maybe new, but this is a fact that we're having this dialogue, right? And we're hoping that the intention of having this podcast is to showcase and to help other people that are, that are consuming the content, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing that's really cool on your end is that since you've been doing this for so long, on-page SEO right? Think about that. What's the after state? What is that keyword phrase that people are looking for? Mm. Window repair city, Mm -hmm. right? Boom. Service plus city. Mm -hmm. That could work, right? Yeah. And then just you show them the outcome of like, whatever. And then get down in there. You do all the stuff, the imagery that's going to actually correspond to the problem. The, you know, this is a bird going through your window. And then here's the guy with the truck uh, from Anything Glass. We did their website. He's my boy. Check it out. <laughs> um, exactly. Anyways, exactly. He's showing up with the truck and the planes of glass, and this is what it is. And then just basically taking them through. So you're showing them the process, the the why, the and you know all that other kind of stuff. I like that because it, it does keep it very customer centric, and it is definitely something that people are going to relate to more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you've been putting this in for your business. I'm trying on mine. Can you think of any issues that like a typical business would have trying to trying to switch over their marketing and their messaging? I think a challenge that you're going to come up with is being too close to the problem. Right? There was a saying from one of my coaches that uh, it's hard to read uh, the label when you're sitting inside of the bottle. Right. So that's why I hired and worked with a story brand certified guide because I was too close to the problem. Right. Mm-hmm. The way in which you, as the superhero, as the guide, right, sees things, you're the expert in your space. You are the expert in your business. So the challenge with that is you know so much more than the average person does that you're going to articulate things to a, in, in a way to where it's common sense to you, but to the average human that, that communicates at a sixth grade level, they're not going to understand it. Mm-hmm. So how do you then, quote unquote, dumb it down? Right. How do you? like make it more straightforward, right? So then the the masses can understand you. When you're speaking to someone in that sense, I would challenge you to say, well, you know, Kevin, you and I are blessed to have young kids at home so because we, so, so that test always comes up. We're always having to rephrase things and speak to someone that's younger to communicate that way. That's effective communication, right? So I think that's the biggest challenge, right? Is going through this and then saying, how does my average customer communicate? How do I communicate with that person? So they understand what I'm saying is gonna be the hardest part. Yeah, well, like one of the one of the roadmaps or sorry, roadblocks that I've had is let's say to look at a digital marketing company, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know who the hero is. The hero is the business owner or like basically, yeah, the business owner who's going to be reaching out to us. Right now, their problem that we speak to 
it's very easy for us to list 10 problems that they have. Oh, you don't have enough time. You don't have this. You're not making enough money because you don't have systems. Oh, you don't, you can't make good ads that are attractive to people. Oh, you get leads, but they don't convert. But in reality, when somebody is looking at your content, you know, generally they're going to buy off you because you talk about one problem. And the biggest problem that that I've experienced when just kind of going through the, the theory is how do you pick that one problem? Like, how do you know? Why is it that people actually purchase? They want that one problem solved? Yeah. And how do you pick the one problem, right? We, we solve dozens of problems. Literally, we solve dozens of problems for people, right? You have that decade of knowledge, decade plus of knowledge. You know how to solve tons of things. But generally, if somebody is going to purchase off you, they're purchasing for, you know, basically one reason, right? So even though you can, you can help them in 20 ways, yeah. how do you decide which one you should narrow in on in your brand script? Yeah, I think that's a great uh, question. I mean, one way to facilitate that is, I mean, and we're talking more specifically about a digital marketing, say, agency or market mm -hmm. or consultant out there, right? 